On the last 50 years, Goldman tonometer has been considered the main tool to obtain inner eye pressure. Recently, due to a major understanding about corneal biomechanical properties, the physician's concern about the precision of their measure has been awakened. Its reading is the result of the resilience to applanation offered by the inner eye pressure plus the corneal resilience. It's common not to take the corneal participation into the consideration, always it presents normal features, and that's correct. But what can be considered a normal cornea? What limits can we permit? The actual previous approach brings anatomical information such as the thickness, the curvature, the diameter, but a few about biomechanical nature as the hysteresis or the total rigidity that can be obtained with the new rigidest software. Many properties, however, cannot be evaluated yet and therefore, its importance is difficult to be measured. It's now the thickness influences and modifies the reading of the Goldman tonometer. But what proportion is required to have a change of 1 mm of mercury? 540 and 550 micro are considered normal, but how to make them if accompanied of big curvatures or even anomalies as the characterconus, which has flabby corneas? The diameter also influences its reading. Small corneas are usually more difficult to be flattened than the big ones. What would be the participation of several properties that composes the named mix of properties of the cornea? With time, some properties may be differently modified by action of many aging oxidation processes. However, each cornea is unique and so each moment in time. The cornea, independently of its thickness, can contaminate the real measure of the inner eye pressure. See this example. Observe now this other study. As we get away from the corneal core, its thickness grows in the direction of the periphery. A bigger cornea thickness found out of the core requires major compression effort of the Goldman tonometer. After its reading, usually the Goldman tonometer leaves a light impression over the cornea. Each one millimeter away from the corneal apex acts as if we had aided 30 micro of thickness, which will require more strength to flatten it. Note that exists an apparent increase of the pressure while the tip of the tonometer gets away from the visual axis. We ask the patient to fix a point laterally to a new pressure measure followed by parkimetry. And a fake pressure increase was found. Observe that each cornea has its own thickness progression. 
There is also differences between a health theme cornea and a keratoconus. Maybe that's why some corneas became harder to aplanate on the sides than others. See the difference. Therefore, the cornea, no doubt, influences the inner eye pressure results when obtained with the traditional Goldman tonometer. Once the cornea has so many properties, it can be difficult to be classified. It becomes necessary to use technologies to control the inner eye pressure that do not depend on the cornea. The pachymetry exam provides us information about the corneal quantity, not its quality.